Hi, I'm Luca Congedo and in this tutorial we are going to perform a basic link cover classification using the same automatic classification plugin. So first we open the Benset tool here from the SCP menu. Here this is the window of the same automatic classification plugin. We can see here on the left uh, all the available tools that we can access from uh, this menu here. And this is the interface of the Benset definition. So basically here we are going to open uh, the input images. So with this button here we can select uh, the input bands from this uh, sample dataset, which is a Copernicus Sentinel-2 dataset. So we select all the bands and as you can see here the bands are loaded in the band set definition table here. And you can see that this is the active bandset one. We'll see later what active bandset means, but you can see here that we have a list of bands with the center wavelength defined here. At the moment, the center wavelength is just the number of the band, but we are going to set the center wavelength based on Sentinel-2 definition, as you can see here in this table. We could enter the values manually here, but we can also quickly enter the values automatically, selecting Sentinel-2 bands from this menu here, the band quick settings. And as you can see, after we select Sentinel-2 bands, automatically the center wavelength is defined for each band. Also from the band set table on the left, we can see here that it is uh, populated with the first part of the name of the bands, and we can use it for managing the band sets. Here we have the working toolbar. From this toolbar we can manage the input bands, for instance to create a color composite, RGB color composite. We can also create uh, the region of interest, the polygons, and we can also perform classification previews. So first we are going to load a RGB color composite. From this menu we can select uh, already a few color composites. So for instance, this is the natural color composite for the bands 3 to 1. You should notice that the band order is defined based on the band set definition. As you can see here, a virtual band set is added to the QGIS layers and we can also change uh, the color composite directly from this menu and you can see that the map is updated accordingly. So now from the SCP doc we select training input the turning input allows to define the region of interest and the spectral signatures here from the ROI and signature list. But first we must create a turning input. We could load a previously saved turning input or simply create a, a new turning input with this button. So we click this button and we save, for instance, and we define the name, for instance, training. And as you can see, after we have created the training input, uh, the path of the training input is displayed here. You can notice that each training input is related to a defined band set. So for instance, this is uh, defined according to the band set one. In this tutorial, we are going to create uh, a link cover classification with these four classes. In particular, we define the macro class one as water, the macro class two as built up, the macro class 3 as vegetation and the macro class 4 as soil. So now in the image we are going to create the polygons that define the length over classes that we want to classify. So for instance we zoom here, the dark blue area over the lake, uh, we click this button and then in the map uh, with a left click we can create this polygon and with the right click we close the polygon. As you can see here we have created a semi-transparent polygon. This is a temporary region of interest and that we need to save in the training input. Using these options here as macro class ID we can define the number of the macro class, so for instance one. Here in MC name we define the name of the macro class, so for instance water. And here in C name we define the class name, so for instance lake. Once we have defined these details, we can click this button 
to save the ROI to the training input. As you can see here, the region of interest is saved in the ROI and signature list, and it is listed here. Also, you should notice that the SCP training layer is loaded in the QGS map. This is for displaying the saved regions of interest, and you should not edit this file directly. So now we are going to create uh, other regions of interest for the other land cover classes. So for instance, we can zoom here over an urban area. We can click this button here uh, to activate the region of interest pointer here. With this button, we are going to create a, a region of interest with automatically region growing algorithm. After clicking on a pixel, you can see here that a polygon is automatically created based on the similarity with the pixel that we have clicked. And the similarity is defined here with this parameter distance. We can, for instance, increase this value and redo the region of interest using this button. As you can see here, we have uh, created a very large polygon that covers not only our uh, land cover class, so we need to reduce this value in order to create a homogeneous uh, polygon. So for instance, we decrease the value and we reduce the region of interest. Here, as you can see, the result is much better. Now the polygon covers uh, only the pixels that we need for the built-up class. So now we can save it to the training and input list. So first we define the macro class ID here. As you can see, the class ID is automatically increased by one. So we just need to change the macro class name here, for instance, built up, and the class name, for instance, buildings. Then we can click this button to save the ROI to the training input file. And as you can see, also this polygon is added to the ROI and signature list. You should notice that we can use this button here to undo uh, the saving of a region of interest. Here we have removed the last saved ROI. And we can also redo the action. As you can see here, we have uh, added again the previously saved ROI. So this is useful during the region of interest creation. Now we can create a third region of interest for the class vegetation. So for instance, we zoom here and we can click with this button to create a region growing ROI. As you can see, the polygon covers also not vegetated area, so we can decrease a bit the distance value. Here, much better, as these are basically crops. So now we can save also this polygon here. So we change the macro class ID according to our classification system, the macro class name vegetation, and the class name, for instance, fields. Also, we can create uh, uh, another region of interest for areas that are not covered by vegetation. So for instance, here, we can recognize it from the color. So we can click this button and create a new polygon here. So we can save it to the macro class ID 4 and the macro class name soil. And we can also change the class name as bare soil and click this button to save it to the training input. Here, so we have created also the fourth region of interest. And now we have uh, a region of interest for each land cover class. As you can see here, also the color that is uh, assigned to each uh, uh, region of interest, it is automatically assigned. So we can change it. So with a double click on a color, we can pick a color and change it according to our choice. Then with a double click here, we select 
So for instance, red for buildings. We select uh, uh, green for vegetation fields. We double click and select yellow for the bare soil here. So now that we have defined also the colors for the classes, we must also define the colors for the macro classes. So again, with a double click, we can select the color according to our choice. And we will use basically the macro class for the classification, but as you can see also using the classes can be useful for classification previews. So here we have defined the colors for both classes and macro classes. We can also display the spectral signature of the region of interest. So selecting one region of interest, then clicking this button. As you can see, a new window is opened and the spectral signature is displayed. This is the spectral signature of water. We can also add other spectral signatures to the plot. And as you can see here, We have added the four spectral signatures and we can easily identify materials according to the spectral signatures. So now that we have defined a minimum number of uh, region of interest, we can display a classification preview. But first we need to select a classification algorithm. So from the SCP menu band processing classification, you can see these windows open. Also, we could select uh, the same tool from this menu on the left. And first, we need to set the input bandset here. This is defined according to the bandset we have uh, defined previously. We can also choose to classify the map according to the macro class ID or the class ID. So this can be useful to uh, select a meaningful region of interest and in particular remove the region of interest that can cause errors in the classification. You can see here we have several classification algorithms, maximum likelihood, minimum distance, multilayer perception, random forest, spectral angle mapping, and subtle vector machine that we are going to uh, illustrate in uh, other tutorials. For now, we are going to use the maximum likelihood algorithm. Then for the classification preview, we can set here with the parameter S, the sites of the preview. Uh, as expressed in pixels, in number of pixels. So we, for instance, define uh, 300 as the side of the preview. Then we use this button here and click on the map to create uh, the classification preview. As you can see, the classification process starts and after a few seconds, we can see here the classification preview. Of course, the time required for the classification preview depends on the selected algorithms. So this is the result. Now we can select uh, the macro class ID in order to perform the classification according to the macro class ID code. So we click this button here to redo the classification preview. And as you can see, the, the preview has changed according to the colors that we have defined for the macro class ID. We can use this button to zoom to the preview and use this button to display or hide the classification preview. So we can actually assess the result of the classification. Of course, we have just created uh, a classification with the, uh, the bare minimum number of uh, uh, region of interest. So you can see here there are several errors. Uh, for instance, here uh, the water is classified as built up. So we need to add uh, more region of interest to create a better classification. As you can see here, I added several region of interest for the cover classes. So once we have uh, decided that the number of region of interest are, is uh, enough, we can uh, perform the final classification using the macro class ID. You should also notice that we can load a, a previously saved uh, classifier. We could also run it uh, from a script. 
but for now we can click run to perform the classification for the whole image. So we define the name of the output classification here. And now, as you can see, the classification process starts. Of course, it requires uh, time for the classification to perform, depending on the number of regions of interest and the complexity of the algorithm. Here, we can see the classification for the whole image. As you can see, the layer has been added to the map here. As you can see, we can compare the uh, RGB color composite to the classification and uh, assess if there are errors. For instance, we can select the uh, network color composite here. We can zoom over the image and assess the errors. In particular, we can see that part of bare soil is classified as built up. This is uh, because uh, the spectral similarity of uh, uh, the spectral signatures. Of course, we can perform better classification using different algorithms and adding more region of interest. And we are going to see how to improve the classification in other tutorials. Thank you for watching.